So the next point of discussion that I wish to mention in this particular video, and something which has stuck with me throughout the investigation into the disappearance of Nicola Bully, is the lack of actual proof, the lack of evidence, and how that is actually portrayed by the police in the press conferences. Now, when you look back at these press conferences, we get terminology such as the information that we have gathered through the eyewitnesses and the CCTV has allowed us to really build up a rich picture of Nicola's movements that morning. We don't have Nicola Bully on CCTV leaving the area. Therefore, we believe that Nicola remained in the Riverside area throughout. So really it builds a picture up, doesn't it, that they have quite a lot of information, evidentially speaking, to suggest that Nicola was here at a certain time, there at a certain time. But when you peel back the layers of this case, I do get a very uneasy feeling about it, and I can't quite understand why. Why would the police oversell what they had? Now, I can understand the police were under quite a lot of pressure from people who were speculating and saying, well, how can you be so sure that Nicola's in the river? You haven't provided us any CCTV. You haven't provided us with anything, evidentially speaking, to suggest that Nicola is actually in the water. So could it be that the police carefully worded their press conferences to give the illusion that they actually had more evidence than they actually did? Let's really focus on what they did have. Or what they didn't, I should say. They didn't have any CCTV of Nicola Bully on the morning of January the 27th, apart from her leaving her home address. There is no CCTV footage capturing Nicola on her walk from the school direction towards the Iron Bridge and then onto the towpath. There's no CCTV of coverage of Nicola Bully on her walk, nor is there any CCTV of Nicola Bully starting her walk. Yet all we hear in those press conferences is that we cannot see Nicola leaving the Riverside area, which is actually not important. What is important is that you don't have CCTV. Why would you need to allude to the fact or even mention the fact that you don't have her leaving the area? Because it then clearly gives people the impression that, OK, maybe they've, they've seen her somewhere, but she hasn't left. Therefore, oh, OK, she must have remained in the Riverside area. It gives a completely false impression compared to what they actually had, evidentially speaking. We know at this time that there were a number of dog walkers in the area and we've been extremely fortunate from the very start of this inquiry to have a number of witnesses, key witnesses, who know Nicola. So there is no miscommunication about the identification of who is in that field. This, I also believe, is a clever turn of phrase here or a clever use of terminology. When they state this individual, this eyewitness, knew Nicola, when I heard that in those press conferences, I thought, oh, okay, okay, this is someone who knows her personally, you know, someone who is familiar with Nicola. But I don't think that's the case. I really do not believe that these eyewitnesses knew Nicola personally. I think it's just a case of, oh, yeah, 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 I saw a blonde lady. I often see her walking a dog over the field. Sometimes her partner walks the dog, but... You know, not even on first name terms. I think that's the actual truth of it. And we also need to remember that the eyewitness account from the upper field was from a distance. Yet that is not stated in these press conferences. What is stated, however, is this is a person who is known to Nicola. Therefore, there can be no confusion about who was seen in the field that morning. Again, why the need to oversell a certain situation or paint it to be potentially something which it is not. This is what I feel quite uneasy about. Also factor this in. If this individual knew Nicola, if this individual knew Nicola Bully, then why did it take them over three or four days to come forward to the police if they knew Nicola on a personal level? Why would it take so long? Bearing in mind that the first three days of this search operation, or at least the first couple of days, this news was pretty much kept to the local area. Then it became mainstream news, national news, international news, as the days and weeks progressed. But Nicola went missing on the 27th. On the 29th, there was a meeting 
at the village hall for residents of that local area. So clearly, it was widespread news in the community at that time that Nicola Bully had gone missing. Yet why does it take this crucial witness, who apparently knows Nicola, three or four days, maybe even longer, to come forward to say, oh yeah, I saw Nicola, yeah, in the field. Why did it take that long if he actually knew Nicola? What is also worth remembering and factoring into this equation is the last press conference held by Rebecca Smith, where she states something along the lines of, you know, we've put hundreds of hours into this investigation. We've been very fortunate with the CCTV and the credible verified eyewitnesses that we have. Therefore, that allowed us to put our timeline incredibly quickly in this case or in this instance. But does anybody remember that for the first week of this investigation, the timeline was completely and utterly incorrect. So how does that work? Because Sally Riley came out during the first week of Nicola's disappearance and categorically stated that the last eyewitness account of Nicola was on the towpath at around 9.15 and they constantly asked for dashcam footage between 9.10 and 9.15, that critical time period where they were seeking dashcam footage from Garstang Road, which, you know, we're not going to get into that, are we? Blackpool Lane, Garstang Road, we've been there, we've done that a million times. But what stands out to me is the way that they portray this area of certainty, this aura of certainty. Yet we're supposed to believe that this eyewitness on the upper field, who doesn't actually get come into this equation at all until a week after Nicola's gone missing. This is someone who is known to Nicola, someone who knows Nicola. He cannot be wrong with his eyewitness account. That's basically what they're trying to portray there. He cannot be wrong. This is verified. He knows Nicola. That's the end of it. So there can be no qualms, no issues with who was in the field that day. My biggest issue, however, and I don't know if I speak for other people when I say this, but my biggest concern is that we have 700 vehicles that, according to the police, passed along that road each day where Nicola starts her walk. They sought dash cam footage from those cars. They wrote to the cars. It wasn't it wrote to the owners of the cars. It wasn't as if they were just appealing for dash cam footage. They actually found the addresses of these drivers who drove through the village that day and sent them letters. If you have dash cam footage, please send it in. Yet not one of those vehicles, not one of those vehicles, has Nicola walking towards the Iron Bridge. That does concern me. Is it a case here that we are just looking at an individual who saw a lady walking a dog from a distance? Is that the truth? Is that what the police really have here? Because to say that this person knew Nicola or to allude that they may have had some sort of personal relationship, or they knew each other maybe even on first name terms, I do not believe that is correct. I just don't buy into that. What I'm more concerned about is the lack of evidence here. The lack of proof that Nicola entered the towpath at a certain time and didn't leave. That's the issue for me personally. Another point which surprises me greatly is that we've had no talk whatsoever from the police, saying something along the lines of, yes, we've had lots of phone calls from drivers that morning, from motorists who passed through the area, and although they didn't have dash cam footage, we have had a number of people who believe they saw Nicola that morning and she was walking her dog. We don't have that, do we? And with the police's propensity to oversell what they do have in those press conferences, I do find that quite bizarre. Have they genuinely not had one motorist who didn't have dash cam call up and say, hang on a minute, yep, I was driving through there that morning and I saw a lady with blonde hair walking a spaniel. Because you can bet your bottom dollar that if they did have that information, it would have found its way into those press conferences. I'm sure it would have sounded a little something like this. Well, although we have no dash cam footage of Nicola that morning, we have had a number of phone calls from motorists who do believe they saw her walking towards the Iron Bridge. We've had quite a few motorists who have called up to say, they saw a lady matching Nicola's description walking a spaniel dog. But we've had none of that, have we? Why is that? Why is that? It's not some isolated, secluded road. You can see in front of you here how busy that road is between 9 and 10am in the morning. Yet not one car 
and potentially not even one motorist has saw Nicola walking from the school direction towards that iron bridge. Are we just relying here on a witness who saw a lady walking a dog from some distance? That's what concerns me. Now, early information in this case, and one of the earliest eyewitness accounts, came from an anonymous source. This was a friend, by all accounts, of Nicola Bullies, who wished to remain anonymous. And she said that she had spoken to two dog walkers who saw Nicola that morning walking on the towpath. They exchanged pleasantries. There was a laugh and a joke as they walked by. But then this eyewitness account is eradicated. It's taken off of the official timeline. It appears there initially in newspaper reports across all of mainstream media, yet then it simply vanishes. And then we have the story of the lady wearing the red jacket. Now the police were adamant, or at least fairly confident, that this lady would have seen Nicola that day. They've seen this lady in red on CCTV and they must have thought to themselves, well hang on a minute, if this lady is here at a certain time, she must have seen Nicola Bully. Yet she didn't. This lady said, I've already spoken to the police. I didn't see her. I didn't see her that morning. And we need to start asking ourselves, why is that? Why is there no dash cam footage of Nicola on her walk? Why are there no motorists coming forward to say, yes, I saw a lady matching her description, walking towards the Iron Bridge? And why did the lady in red not see Nicola Bully when the police, according to their timeline, were fairly confident that she should have seen her? This lady in red should have seen Nicola based on where this lady was during the time she was caught on CCTV. But she is adamant that she didn't see Nicola. What I also found quite interesting, and I mean this may literally be nothing, but the last press conference held by Rebecca Smith, she starts to go through a very in-depth timeline concerning Nicola's disappearance. Bearing in mind that at this point in time the police are feeling scrutinised, under pressure, We've now got the SIO who's appearing in this press conference instead of Sally Riley, who was the face of the investigation early on. And as I say, she starts to go through an in-depth timeline of Nicola's disappearance. She talks about her leaving her home address, arriving at the school, starting her walk. Yet the only eyewitness that is mentioned in that press conference is the man in the upper field. So at the start of the investigation, we've got the last known sighting being on the towpath at around 9.10, 9.15, 9.20. I mean, the times change, but the sighting is supposedly on the towpath. Then we have the eyewitness on the lower field. And then we have the eyewitness on the upper field. And eventually the individuals who find Nicola's belongings. But in the last press conference, there's only one eyewitness who's mentioned. The 843 individual is gone. The lower field sighting, not even mentioned, not even referred to. It's only the upper field eyewitness account which is referred to by Rebecca Smith in that final press conference. Now, for a case with so few eyewitnesses, it does make me wonder how the story continually changed from the towpath to a sighting on the lower field, a sighting on the upper field. Dash cam footage sought for from an incorrect road at an incorrect time. So many inconsistencies regarding this case, yet the police portray a very different story. The final point of discussion in this particular video surrounds a little known piece of information regarding the spa date which was booked between Nicola and her sister in the days leading up to Nicola's disappearance. Take a listen to the following. The following newspaper article is from February the 1st, 2023, with the headline... Missing Nicola Bully's parents share last conversation and fears someone has got her. The devastated parents of missing mum Nicola Bully have described how she was in good spirits in the last conversation they shared, fueling fears has somebody got her. Speaking to the newspaper as the operation to find Nicola enters a sixth day, Nicola's parents Ernest 73 and Dot 72 vowed we will never stop looking for her. They said the disappearance of the 45-year-old mum from Inskip, Lancashire was totally out of character. Ernest saying she had no health problems and was in good spirits enjoying her job. Recalling their last conversation, he said, quote, Her mind was great. We picked the children up the Thursday before she went missing, as we do every Thursday. We took them home. Nicola had a meeting with her boss in Garstang, and she said, Can you stay a bit later, as I have an important client coming in on Zoom? 
She had done her work and she was very upbeat about getting her mortgage sorted. I said to her, we'd better go now, and Nicola came to the front door. I gave her a kiss and told her I loved her, and that was the last conversation I had with her. Nicola dropped her young daughters at school and left the car parked up in St Michael's Village and was last seen walking her dog on a footpath along the River Wire at around 9.20am on Friday before she vanished. A major search involving drones, sniffer dogs, specialist divers and a police helicopter has been unable to turn up any more clues, leaving her parents fearing the worst, especially with no evidence of Nicola having fallen into the river. Ernest said, There was no sign of a slip or falling in, so our thought was, has somebody got her? I asked a sergeant from Fleetwood a few days ago, is there any chance of her being taken? And she said, I don't think that's the case. I said, how can you know that? It's such an isolated area. And they replied, the only way that that has happened is if it was someone who knew her. While Nicola's family live in hope of her turning up, Ernest confessed their worst fears. We just dread to think we will never see her again. If the worst came to the worst and she was never found, how will we deal with that for the rest of our lives? But Ernest vowed we will never stop looking. The couple, who are joint owners of a freight transport company, have split their time between caring for their grandchildren, Nicola's two young daughters, and looking for their own daughter. Just over an hour after Nicola's last confirmed sighting, a member of the public raised the alarm with police when they found Nicola's dog Willow running loose by the river. Police arrived at the scene and found Nicola's phone on a bench, still connected to a work conference call. All members of the family have been involved in the search for Nicola in some way, particularly her younger sister Louise, who has been out every day according to her parents. The sisters had been excitedly planning a spa break the night before Nicola vanished. Dot said Louise had just booked Ribby Hall because they both had spa vouchers. She had just sent Nicola the night before the treatments. Louise booked it on Friday morning and sent it to Nicola, but she never got back to her. They are very close. Nicola, who lived for her children, had also bought tickets to watch them perform at choir and gymnastic shows in recent weeks. The family applauded the efforts of Lancashire Police as marvellous, but are just desperate for clues to beloved Nicky's whereabouts. Okay, so the part that I wish us to focus on there is where it states towards the end of that article, Dot said Louise had just booked Ribby Hall because they both had spa vouchers. She had just sent Nicola the night before the treatments. And yet Nicola does not get back in touch with her sister. That is what is stated here by Nicola's mother, Dot, that Louise contacts her, sends her the spa treatment options, and Nicola doesn't reply. So that's giving us the impression that Nicola wasn't heard from from Thursday night onwards, which is quite interesting. Now, some people may say, well, did something happen to Nicola on the Thursday night? Is that possible? But I think what I'm looking at here is the fact that Nicola hasn't replied does that tell us something else, actually? Maybe her state of mind had changed on the Friday. She hadn't got back to her sister. Could it indicate that? Or could it indicate something else? Now, that information that I've read to you there, I haven't seen that widely reported or widely spoken about online. We've had a lot of discussion about Nicola emailing her boss, attending the work call, planning a play date for her children, and also the spa date, but not the actual intricate details of what took place concerning that conversation but it is noteworthy there that Nicola didn't reply to her sister on the Thursday night or on the Friday. Anyway do leave your own thoughts and theories down in the comments section below and in particular the eyewitnesses the eyewitnesses on the morning that Nicola Bully disappeared. How confident are you at home regarding those eyewitness accounts, particularly from the upper field at 9.10? As I say, what I find most strange about this case is the lack of actual proof, the lack of evidence concerning CCTV or dash cam footage of Nicola on her walk on the morning of January the 27th. 